In this lecture, we're going to start moving across our services and specifically the contact resource service. We're going to migrate that from AngularJS over to Angular. So specifically, we're going to have to take this class that we've created and we're going to have to turn this into an Angular service, an Angular injectable service. You can see here we're also using an old AngularJS HTTP service and we need to start using a more modern Angular service such as the HTTP client module. So let's start by replacing this HTTP module, this $HTTP module with a new Angular module instead. So the one we want to use is called a HTTP client module. And let's start importing that to begin with. And you can find it in Angular common HTTP. And what we want to do to inject in an Angular JS application is just by providing a typed argument to the constructor. So I'm going to provide one with private HTTP. And the type of that is this HTTP client there. And because I'm specifying it as private in the constructor, I actually don't need to specify the, the member property there. And you can see now straight away, it's complaining about this old dollar HTTP service. And what we need to do is essentially change this to the new HTTP client service. Now the actual signature of, of both of those are actually pretty similar, which is why in a previous step, I recommended moving over to dollar HTTP because it made this step just a lot simpler. So to begin with, let's just remove the dollar because I think actually for most of these calls, the signature is pretty much exactly the same. But a key difference between this and the old method is that this returns something called an observable. Whereas to have this working with the rest of our application, we need to have it return a promise instead. But it's okay, we can convert an observable into a promise by just calling to promise on the observable. So this will turn the observable into a promise. Let me add all of those to the rest of our API calls. Now you could, if you wanted to, just change the rest of your logic to start dealing with observables. But when it comes to HTTP, it can at times be quite useful just to deal with promises. And especially if it means keeping the rest of your API the same, I would recommend that approach versus kind of starting to rewrite everything to use observables because that you can start ending up going down a deep rabbit hole there. Now the thing with this to promise or kind of anything with observables is we need to import or specifically import the to promise function to an observable. It doesn't by default import all of them. So the best way to do that is actually just to import at the top. So import rxjs add operator to promise. So for every operator we want to use on our observable, it's recommended to just import them one at a time. And if you wanted to, in fact, you could just create a separate file in your app root called rxjs uh, operators and just include all the ones you want to include in your entire application just in that one file then maybe include that in main.ts but in this application we're really only going to use this uh, in this one place in this contacts resource so i'm just including it at the top here so in angular js it figured out what to inject just by looking at the name of a property in the constructor in angular we need to be a little bit more explicit now you might see some code in Angular where if you want to make a class injectable in terms of if you want it to auto inject what's in the constructor, you would typically you would typically add a decorator to the class called injectable, which is in fact available will it from here. It's actually not core call from there. Which is actually available from here in Angular. However, I found an issue with injectable in this context uh, when you're running these kind of services in this hybrid dual booted mode. It can't quite seem to figure out how to inject via the constructor. Now, maybe this is a bug with Angular. Maybe it would be fixed by the time you are migrating your application. So try it out with injectable and see if it works. If it doesn't work with injectable, then I recommend using the approach of the the direct inject keyword, decorating the property itself. So you decorate it like this, you pass in HTTP client, and then you can provide a, still the same kind of type and member property there. 
And what this does, what the inject a decorator does, is it informs the Angular dependency injection framework that when this class is constructed, get a reference to the HTTP client dependency and make HTTP be assigned to that. So the difference between this and injectable is injectable, you just need to do it on the class and it figures out automatically from the, the constructor. With inject, you need to really do, do it for every single property on your constructor. And in hybrid mode, I'm finding that this is just a lot more stable and it works a lot better. So for now in hybrid mode, I do recommend to just use the inject decorator directly. So just to visualize what we're doing, we've taken our hybrid mode, a dual booted application, and we've taken our leaf node, the resource, and we've kind of rewritten it to be Angular 5 or modern Angular. But if you remember, in order to be able to use an Angular entity inside an Angular JS entity, so that resource is still going to be used inside our contact service, and our contact service is still Angular JS. So we need to do something. We need to do something called downgrading. So we downgrade the resource, an Angular resource, so it can be used inside an Angular JS service. And that's what we're going to do right now. So we first need to import a function from Angular from our upgrade module. And the function we need to import is called downgrade injectable. And again, you can find in Angular upgrade static. And then right at the bottom, where we're defining our Angular JS module, we need to do a couple of things. We need to change it from a service into a factory. And instead of just providing the contact class, we need to wrap it or call downgrade injectable, injectable, pass in the contact. And, um, and yeah, that's it. So that's what we need to do in order to downgrade this contact service, this now Angular contact service, so it can be used inside AngularJS. And there's one other thing we need to do. We need to actually make this available to the Angular dependency injection framework, which means we need to go into our app module at the top, and we need to add it as a provider. And in fact, we need to do something else as well. So the first thing I need to do is I need to add a providers property. And here I'm going to provide our contact, which we just created. And then let's just yep, import that in. In fact, it's just from there. The next thing we need to do is to make sure we provide the HTTP client module so we can inject it or have it injected inside our contact resource. So to do that, we just essentially add a new import into our ng module. And then we need to import our HTTP client module from here. There we go. So this HTTP client module has its own providers which provide that HTTP client dependency, which can then be used inside our contact. Okay, so now hopefully this is working. So if I compile this, let me clear this. So npm run build. And now if I take a look at the application, it should be failing. I know it should be failing because there's one other thing that we need to do. So if you look at inspect element and then look in the network panel and hit refresh. If you look at the bottom where it's look at the contacts, you can see it seems to be making an API request and it's returning, well, not much really. So we're saying an empty string, and that's because it's passing in null in Q. Now the reason it's doing that is because, well, just a slightly different way in which our new HTTP client library is dealing with these parameters. In the previous one, if it was if it was being passed null, it would just send nothing. In the new one, if it gets passed null, it will actually send the string null. So just to make sure it's not going to be sent null, let's go into our search, and, and the re the Q is being sent from the search here. So we look here, um, Q is this search. So all I want to do is essentially, instead of defaulting that to null, let's default that to empty string. And the other thing we need to deal with is the fact that the API, well, the HTTP client library is returning information in a slightly different format. The old dollar HTTP library would return us the information in the data property of the results. Now it's actually just going to return us the array directly 
as this res property. And so it's going to be returning an array. We can then check for the length is equal to zero there. And then, yep, I believe that's it. Let's compile this. And now if we go back into here, hit refresh, everything's working as we expect. And we can edit and save and do all that wonderful goodness.